it's very hard for birthing better families to determine which are the best of the skills. There's no way to know which of these skills you'll use in your birth, and that's why we encourage you to become familiar with all of them to at least a working knowledge. Does it take long to learn these skills? No. Is it worth it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's your choice, so we hope you'll become skilled. As we'll repeat over and over again, when the skills started to develop in the early 1970s, we focused on coping with labor because the cesarean rate was 4.5%. However, many of us had long labors and even long second stages. We didn't call medical care interventions back then, by the way. They were assessments, monitoring, and procedures. And if we went to the hospital, we expected to have medical assessments, monitoring, and procedures. And in fact, most of us felt that that was good to have modern medical care around. Pregnancy and childbirth are normal life events, but we need to understand what the word normal means. And the word normal means anything that could or might happen is normal. We may not like it, but it's normal and it's natural. So pregnancy and childbirth have always been fraught with heaps and heaps of issues, and every traditional health system around the world recognizes that. They're very prescribed in pregnancy about what women can eat, what they can wear, where they can sit, what they can see, sex, no sex, work, no work. Very prescribed because they're trying to safeguard the mother and baby. And this is also true with newborns and why women were often secluded or why they didn't name babies for weeks and weeks and weeks. Behaviors were very prescribed in all traditional communities because they knew that pregnancy and childbirth were absolutely fraught with normal and natural dangers. They may not be frequent, but you never know what your birth's gonna be like. However, they're not focused on how to manage labor. A lot of people misconstrue this. They really think that around the world, children were exposed to childbirth. Well, not necessarily. In many cultures, women went off by themselves to give birth. In other cultures, they went off with women family members and were gone for an extended period of time. In other cultures, birth occurred wherever it occurred. And the concept of the midwife as we have today didn't exist in most cultures either, as your mother, your aunt, or your grandmother who helped you at a birth, or anybody. We are all one humanity, but we have very, very diverse cultural viewpoints around pregnancy and childbirth. However, birthing better skills are based on our one humanity. You blink, everybody around you blinks, they can cough, and they can tighten up their rectum. So we had to figure out if we were coping well how to prevent these long first and second stages. And that drove us in developing these skills that are these body lessons with the videos attached to them. And we realized that we couldn't wait until 36 weeks to learn these skills. We had to start around 24 weeks. But a lot of people don't even find this resource until they're 36 weeks. So start now, doesn't matter. One skill's better than none. Why the soft pelvis? Well, most of us don't have a clue. A lot of traditional communities don't even know we have a cervix. <laughs> they have no idea. I have worked for many, many years in developing communities. They have no idea what's in the inside of a woman's body. Most of us don't know. Men don't really get that. If you said to a man, you see this? This is going to come out your penis. They look down and they go, oh, no. Once you say to them, that's happening, they're willing to prepare that part of their body. So you need to be willing to work with that part of your body. We have what's called connective tissue. It holds us all together. Our skin's connected to our flesh. Our flesh is connected to our muscles. Our muscles connected to our bones. We have this sheath of connective tissue inside and out of us. That is what stores tension much more so than muscles do. And that can be stored on the inside. And when you go through the four types of tension, you'll understand this more. We had to learn to soften on the inside. And we coupled that eventually with a touch skill. When you get to the touch part, you will learn that we use that as a cue for women to soften inside. What we discovered was softening on the inside of the bony structure, what's called the pelvic clock, helped the cervix to open. I used to call the cervix a muscle, and I had a midwife rage at me, and she said, why are you calling the cervix a muscle? So I actually googled what the what kind of cells were in the um, cervix, and it's 50% muscle cells and 50% connective tissue cells. Well, muscles are a type of connective tissue or soft tissue, so it doesn't matter. The cervix is tightly closed. 
tightly closed. That's a very tight closure. It has to open up to 10 centimeters. Many women have difficulty in progressing the opening of their cervix. As mentioned in another video, about 30% of women do not dilate consistently one centimeter an hour. Their labors are progressing, but they dilate very rapidly toward the end of labor. The most important thing is for your labor to be progressing, and that's in another lesson. <laughs> when you deal with the soft tissue and you go through this video, it's important to know that you can practice these skills driving a car, going shopping, working. These are easy skills to practice while you're doing anything else. So while I'm sitting here talking to you, I can easily move my sacrum. I can soften inside my pelvic clock. I can soften in the cervical relaxation as well. Don't need to do that now, but I can do it. So learn it and use it. This is one of the great skills when you set up the five phases of contractions is to keep softening inside. 